take a look at these three photographs. What do they have in common? Not much at first sight, I know, but guessing from the video's title is probably something to do with light, you might be thinking, and yes, you're right. My point might be flawed, so feel free to disagree, but I would argue that the commonality of these three photographs lies within the significance light as an individual aspect of the photograph has. The way light appears in these photographs is one of the main aspects that makes them interesting. I think they are a nice introduction to the topic of today's video, light in photography. I know, I know, that is pretty vague, but it's a huge topic that needs to be tackled broadly before moving on to the point I'm trying to bring across in the video, so if you're interested, stay here and let's look deeply into light as a fundamental part of photography and pave our way to my message which can be roughly phrased as light in photography is underrated. So, when it comes to the reason for this video, or how I came to the topic, the story begins a couple months ago when I was spending a portion of my day on Instagram, and a guy I follow was answering a Q&A in his stories. I was peacefully sliding through the stories, reading some answers, skipping some others, and then came one slide, which made me hold the slide and think. The question asked was, what is the most important aspect of photography? And the answer given was, composition. That answer made me think, because my initial reaction was disagreement, because singling out composition seems to disregard the other aspects of photography. Part of me was thinking, why not lighting? But after further contemplation, I've come to the conclusion that lighting is not more important than composition, but neither is composition more important than lighting. However, something I did notice was that lighting in photography seems to be underrated. Don't get me wrong, lighting is already highly rated and a central topic in photography, however I believe it's so crucial that the recognition it receives is insufficient, and so I decided to make this video. Just like Christian, the guy who answered composition is a voice for composition in photography, I want to be the voice for light in composition during the time of this video. So now, in the next part, I would like to break down the use of light in photography and how it can be implemented. I've come to observe that in the learning process for beginners in photography, one of the first topics, if not the first topic that is being taught, is composition, before lighting, and I think that's fine, I'm sure there are good reasons that can justify why composition should be taught at first. However, I also noticed that lighting often seems to be disregarded or simply reduced to a couple basic points, such as shoot at golden hour or something. Therefore, I'm going to provide a surface level breakdown of light just to display how big of a topic it actually is, which in addition can hopefully act as a theoretical tutorial of lighting, in case you haven't dealt with light too much yet. So when discussing lighting in photography, I think we should first consider the light sources and differentiate the two main categories, natural light and artificial light. Natural light is any source of light that naturally occurs in the environment, so the most commonly used and the obvious one is the sun. But there are more, such as the moon or even a fire. Although fire is a questionable one, because many fires are produced by humans, so this could be counted as artificial light, I guess. But let's say you're standing at a volcano next to the lava. That is natural. Everyday business of an average photographer, you know? Artificial light is all the light that is produced by humans, so this includes street lamps, home lamps, car headlights, the lights that illuminate the front of a shop, or screens, such as your phone. Within this category, you can now again split artificial light into two types changeable and unchangeable. I suppose this is pretty self-explanatory. Your phone's display, changeable, the street lamps, unchangeable. Alright, so now that we've got the light sources out of the way, let's concentrate on the qualities that light can have which dictate its use and the effect on a photograph. I think the most widely known opposite qualities of light are hard and soft. This simply refers to the transition from light to shadow. That edge can be anything between a clear cut and a smooth gradual transition, 
So this clear cut is hard and this smooth gradient is the result of soft lighting. Hard lighting has a recognisable maximum point, which is the edge, as just shown. But even when the edge is a bit smoother, the lighting can still be described as rather hard. On the other hand, soft lighting has a maximum point that is a bit more difficult to define because if you push soft lighting to the maximum, you basically just get flat lighting, which means there is no shadow. And this border between soft lighting and flat lighting is flexible, but it's not that important. You can view flat lighting as basically the maximum point of soft lighting. Then, the next essential quality of light to consider is the strength. The strength determines how much difference is visible between light and shadow, so if you have a really strong light source, this will often result in a great difference between the light and the shadow, whereas if you have a weak light source, the difference will be less noticeable. But that's only half true, because there are other aspects that also control that contrast. The size of your light source and the distance to the subject. It's mainly these three parameters that control the contrast between the light and the shadow. Put simply, the closer, the stronger, and the bigger, the softer, which can also have the side effect of reducing contrast. The direction of lighting is another aspect that can be considered and oftentimes changed. This is the great thing about this aspect, the direction of light significantly influences the look of your photograph and is something that can oftentimes be changed. Well actually, it's not necessarily the direction of the light that you can change, but your position in relation to the light which effectively gives you the same result as changing the direction of the light itself. The importance of the direction comes from the impact it can have on how you perceive a photograph. You can make a photograph feel dramatic with a sideway direction, or powerful with a top light, or authentic and candid with a frontal light, which indicates a flash which has connotations to events such as parties and therefore evokes a certain feeling in the viewer. There is so much to play with when it comes to only the direction of light, so those were only a few examples. Then I'd like to mention two more aspects of light which you might want to consider when shooting, the colour and the texture. The colour will mostly have emotive implementations, such as a warm light that enhances the feeling of a sunset photograph which would feel a bit off if the light were neutral, or a green light which can cause feelings of mystery for example. Lastly, the texture, which is sort of a special aspect because it could be separated and called an effect that you can apply, but I thought it'd be nice to include it in this section anyway. The texture of light can be the result of anything that you put in between the source and the subject that produces a visible effect. So here, the sun is my source, but the mist is adding a texture. A much clearer example is this scene from the Blade Runner 2049 film, where light is used in combination with the reflection off of water, which produces this prominent effect. So the point I want to make here is that light can be enhanced by adding a layer in between to achieve subtle or even wild effects. So that was an overview of the different aspects of lighting in photography. I hope this will help you to better understand the importance of lighting and also the use of lighting, which I want to dive into deeper in the next chapter. With a better understanding of lighting, let's have a look at how lighting is practically used in photography. When you break down photography and think about it on a fundamental basis, you could certainly argue that lighting is the most important aspect because photography is literally a technical method of capturing light to picture what is in front of the lens. Without light, there is no photography. But I think discussing the topic on this level is pretty pointless and it makes more sense to differentiate between light as a ground level necessity for the art of photography to exist and the tool that is lighting. Lighting as a tool I think is mostly used to direct the eye of the viewer, just like composition does, and additionally add an emotional level to a picture. With all the aspects we discussed previously, a photographer has the power to use lighting in a way that can evoke a feeling, much more than composition can, I would argue. Let's look at some examples. Here's a photo I recently shot in my kitchen. By the way, this is one of the few photos from that roll of Portrait 100 I recently shot that didn't suffer from light leaks. The lighting here is hard, sideway, and warm, plus you could count the pattern from the blinds as a sort of texture. These aspects all make it very obvious what the light source is, even though it is not visible in the frame. The sun, of course. However, in addition to implying the source, it is implying so much more. The direction, which is especially accentuated by the pattern of the blinds, also signals that this was shot at sunset. The warmth, of course, adds to this. 
It's the sum of these aspects that make the photograph feel warm and nostalgic, at least that is how it feels in my opinion. And it evokes a feeling of longing in me, a longing for slower days, which I think is just because I falsely remember the past to be a slower paced time. I think it's fair to say that the lighting is the main driver of both the story and the emotions of this photograph. Here's a second example, which I think works better to show how light can lead the viewer's gaze, similarly to composition. There is clearly only one light source in this photograph, the street lamp. Thanks to the forest on the left side of the frame, the light is given a visible direction. In that direction stands the subject of the photo, the green bin. Thanks to the fog that night, the distance the light travels from the source to the subject is easy to recognise and hence works almost like a leading line in a composition. This is also made possible by the fact that it was shot at night, which allows for the surrounding to fade away into darkness. This concentrates the attention to the illuminated parts of the image. And so I think it is again fair to argue that the lighting here is one of the key factors that make this photograph interesting. Just imagine what this photo would look like during sunrise in golden hour. Golden hour is considered a great time to shoot, which it certainly is, however it would reveal way too many distractions in this scene so that it would be hard to recognise the bin as the subject. In this case, the lighting situation at this moment of time, the night, is what made the photo possible. This brings me to the argument I'm trying to make in this video, that lighting is not to be put off as something of less significance than composition. The argument for composition, according to Christian, was that composition is what brings meaning and story to photography, whereas without composition everything else is just aesthetics, tricks and tools, as he writes. And I simply think that this is incorrect. While lighting does play a major role in the aesthetic of a photograph, it cannot just be reduced to that. I believe you can achieve a good photograph both ways, with good lighting but a bad composition, or with a good composition but bad lighting. But if you miss both, it could get pretty difficult. I think a key difference between the two aspects is the type of influence they have on a photograph. Composition can create a story and bring structural harmony to a photograph. Lighting, however, can also create a story but then tends to change the emotive aspect of the photograph and control the feeling that the picture evokes. And so, with all the points made in this video, my only aim is to raise awareness, I suppose, that lighting is so incredibly important and should not be disregarded as something to simply assist the composition of a photograph. I hope I was able to precisely explain why this is, and possibly introduce you to a new way of viewing and practicing photography. So that is it for this week, I hope you found this interesting and I was able to touch on at least one thing that sparked something in you. Let me know your thoughts on this topic, I always love to see when the community exchange their individual thoughts and expand each other's understanding. I look forward to reading your comments. Before saying goodbye, I'd like to say a very warm thank you to the Patreon community who are supporting me and this channel. If you're interested in Lightroom presets, tutorials or printed postcards, you can check out what I have to offer via the link in the description. Anyway, thanks for being here and I'll see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.